Are you in on it? I'm in on it. Yep, I'm definitely in on it. Just got in on it last week. Yeah, took us by surprise. But we're definitely in on it now. The it these people are in on is the surprisingly great rates for auto insurance from State Farm. Can I get in on it? Absolutely. Just contact your local State Farm agent today, and you can get in on some surprisingly great rates, too. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. When you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Deidre Bembry in Noonan today. Divorce Radio Show, and I'm the owner of Blue Skies Mediation in Peachtree City. I help people get a less sucky divorce. Not you, but maybe your neighbor or friend or sister. I'm a certified divorce financial analyst and a licensed family mediator, and I use these skills with my clients to help them get a professional divorce without escalating fees and emotions. My goal is to help them get through the divorce process while retaining their sanity, their assets, and most importantly, their integrity. Albert Einstein said, don't listen to the person who has the answers. Listen to the person who has the questions. My name is April Novoa, and welcome to the Everything Considered podcast, where we discuss everything from mysticism to philosophy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Are you looking for guidance and direction? Stop on by the House of Light Tuesdays from 12 to 3 and have tea and tarot with Christy. The House of Light is located at 29 Jackson Street in Noonan, Georgia. Call 470-414-6711 for more information. The House of Light brings clarity to your soul, offering a safe space for healing through our compassionate practitioners, services, classes, and wisdom, plus the tools to support you in our retail space. The Herb Shop offers alternative holistic approaches to health, as well as personalized programs for your specific health issues. They are located at 408 Ridley Avenue in LaGrange. Stop on by or give them a call for more information at 706-756-1400, or you can find them on Facebook at The Herb Shop LaGrange. Hello, everybody. This is April Navo with the Everything Considered podcast, and I'm very excited today. I have Rachel Weaver with us today, and she is uh, your messaging bestie. <laughs> so <I know>. <laughs> she, she helps a lot of spiritual leaders, and I know as a person who has uh, worked in this field for a while um, that oftentimes business doesn't really, at least the business programs that are out there and the books that I've read don't always really align very well with uh, individuals that work um, in spirituality. Um, yeah. yeah. So Rachel's going to talk. She's got a different take on on this, and I'm going to kind of let her explain to you uh, what it is she does uh, in her work with spiritual leaders in the spiritual community. Thank you, April, so much. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you. Um, yeah, it's so basically... I blend human design and copywriting so that spiritual leaders, um, healers, coaches, that kind of those, um, that niche really create a message that is clear, but also really truly unique to them and mm. feels really good, right? When we're able to clearly communicate what we do in a way that is purposeful and meaningful, then content writing sales pages and emails, all of it just feels so much easier. And we're able to attract the people that are meant to work with us. Right. And sometimes it, I, I know as an, you know, I've worked with, tried to work with different things and it just doesn't feel right to me. It, it just yeah. doesn't, just doesn't fit. And I end up just kind of doing it my way anyway, but that's <laughs> kind of what you're, you're teaching really, or you're trying yeah. to lead people back to, uh, yeah. their original self, their original way of, ex of, uh, expressing themselves as opposed yeah. to try to fit into all these kind of cookie exactly. cutter versions, right? Yeah, exactly. And so much a copy is cookie cutter. Um, mm -hmm. when I really dove in and started learning about buyer psychology and how to write copy that sells, um, it is very cookie cutter and check these boxes. This is what you need to do. And then your thing sells, but I do truly believe that we're moving into a time where that kind of selling isn't working anymore. And it's, it's more about being yourself mm -hmm. being, um, and clearly just communicating what you do. And that's why people want your help, right? Um, they don't want to be sold. They don't want to be mm -hmm. another, just, you know, um, sale for you. Right. They want to actually be 
have a connection with people that they're buying from, especially in the healing and coaching communities. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. I mean, that feeling uh, doesn't feel good to the deliverer or the receiver when there's an authenticity. Uh, Absolutely. It's just something that it, it just doesn't jive. And it's about finding meaning in what you're doing because that's really important. Yeah. 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 And really, uh, sharing your gifts with mm-hmm. the world in a way that helps other people. And yeah, that just makes work so much less not work or in me. It yeah. makes more fun. <laughs> it should flow, shouldn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Now what with a typical client, um, say I was to come to you and, mm-hmm. Um, ask you, you know, how, I, I just, I don't know how to do this. Can you, can you use human design and your skills to help me? Um, yeah. What would you offer and where would we start? Uh, well, first I'd want to see kind of where you're at and what isn't working right in your messaging, in your content, things like that. And you as a manifester asking you like, are you putting yourself into a box? Are you saying mm-hmm. the things that you want to be saying? Um, and we can find a lot of that energy in your chart. It's like the channels that you have connected to your throat, really, really important. Okay. What your sun gate is, what your mercury gate is. And I can look at those and be like, well, are you, um, so just sitting, I don't, I haven't seen your chart, but if you have will center to the throat, I'd be like, well, are you talking about what you want? Are you talking mm. about the desires that you see for other mm-hmm. people? And if you're not, then you're like, mm. and I'm like, that's where we need to go. Yes. That's what we need to start infusing into your copy and your messaging. Okay. Um, and guarantee like, you're going to feel so much more, I guess, like unleashed. Right. <laughs> you're like, this, Free. this is what I want to talk about. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. And I- sometimes with that, I've found that, um, clients want to talk about certain things like the um, that are in their chart, the energies of their chart. Right. But they're scared to, they're worried about doing it. Like they're, um, so there's some deconditioning there that we do, Mm -hmm. um, just to get those channels clear again and feel like, yes, this is me and I'm ready to step out as me. Right. Right. I have uh, the one eight, which is the, you know, channel of inspiration. So if I don't feel like something's really inspiring me, I don't, yeah. You know, I'm just, nope. and then I, I have the uh, 2551 and that's how my will center gets to my throat, which is a little bit of a different, you know, trip. Yep. Um, so, yep. so yeah, I mean, if something doesn't feel inspiring to me, I just don't have the gas for it. I just can't, mm-hmm. I just, it yeah. doesn't work. It's like, it's not there. Yeah. Not there. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. That yeah. Makes sense. So you have this ability to just kind of really hear what, really hear the design, really hear what they're saying and how can they apply it in business? Yep. Yep. And then taking into account your experiences too, and the things that you are passionate about, right. Mm -hmm. And, um, where your life has taken you, uh, and blending that with how you're authentically and designed to communicate. Right. We really are moving into a different paradigm. We are. We're a a lot of things that we've done in the past, um, in terms of business and mm-hmm. our economy are just rapidly shifting. And I mm-hmm. think it's a very good thing. Um, but it's beautiful that we have individuals like you that can recognize that and can help guide people in a direction that's yeah. most impactful for them. Uh, talk yeah. to me a little bit about deconditioning. Mm. I feel like I mean, you can take deconditioning in a lot of different ways, but in the human design world, it just means that you're looking at the beliefs that you've taken on as a child, right? We all know that through the age of seven, you're just a sponge, right? You just take on everything that's around you, whether it's yours or not. And so conditioning shows up primarily in openness, right? Your white centers, but it can also be conditioned from your def- definition as well. So if you have strong channels, like the will center to the throat, where you're saying what you want, right. you can be told as a kid, like what you want doesn't matter <laughs> and yes. stop mm-hmm. talking. Like, no, you can't. And it shuts that channel down where you don't mm-hmm. want to talk about that anymore. You're afraid to talk about it. No one cares. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's conditioning in that re- in that way as well. So it's looking at 
what you have for definition and how that energy works, um, within your chart Mm -hmm. and then going, how do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. Where is the, where is it or how is it showing up in your life? Mm -hmm. And are you mm, putting yourself into a box or limiting that energy Mm -hmm. because you're afraid of something or, Mm. um, that kind of thing. So that's the, when I say deconditioning, that's what I'm talking about. It's, it's clearing your defined channel so that you can speak clearly mm-hmm. and not hold back because of being worried about something. Right. And so, um, if somebody has like, for example, an open throat center, uh, how would, you know, how would you, yeah. how would you help them to, yeah. to overcome feeling? Cause I've got friends that have an open throat center and they often don't feel like they are heard or that they're talked over, um, yep. how, what, how would you approach that with them? Yeah. So open throats, I always ask, like, do you feel like a pressure to talk all the time? Like, do you feel like you just have to get your word in and like the last word or just blurting mm-hmm. things out? Um, if they do, then we work through that of why they feel like they're not heard first. Mm, okay. Um, because the, the magnetism happens with an open throat is when you are, quiet and observant and Mm -hmm. listen, really, truly listen to what the other person's saying. Right. And then mirror back what they say. So when in copy, uh, in copywriting, they talk a lot about using your ideal client's words, right? Like getting into their heads, using their words. That is actually really, really important for somebody with an open throat. Mm. Less important for people with definition in their throat. Still kind of there, but not as important. But someone with an open throat is, yeah, what are your ideal client people saying? Mm -hmm. And how can you reflect back, mirror back what they're saying so that they feel heard and then they will come to you wanting your advice and solution. So Mm -hmm. it's really, it's understanding the pressure to speak and then allowing going, okay, I, I know that when I'm observant and I really, really listen that people will come to me and I trust that people will come to me. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that can be a very difficult thing to work through. I think yeah. too, also an undefined will can be a very difficult thing <sighs> too. You want to talk about that I a little that. bit? <laughs> Do you? So you, so this is from firsthand experience. You are a, uh, four, six, uh, are you, you're a manifesting generator? Yep. A four, six sacral manifesting oh, generator. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. So yeah. Talk to us about this will thing. Cause that's, Oh crazy. gosh. I feel like that's been my, my like life's theme is mm-hmm. dealing with worthiness, right? <laughs> Understanding worthiness. And I also have an open, obviously open solar plex and open head, open Ajna. So uh-huh. I take in other people's emotions, a hundred percent attached ideas to them and why I feel that way and whatnot, but then also seeking validation in other, in just what I do in what I do and what I, everything I'm always wanting that validation. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's been a lot of unpacking and Mm. getting back to know worthiness. I mean, you're worthy just for being born. You're, it doesn't matter. And, but it's an unraveling, right? It's layers of layers, um, of understanding when I'm attaching to outcomes to, um, and letting it, letting it go as I become aware of it. Do you find in that awareness that things just kind of naturally come to you and flow Mm -hmm. as opposed to when you're trying to like make it happen? I can't make anything happen. I try so hard. (laughs) Yeah. It's just not the way it works. It's not. Oh my God. I I swear. Like every time I do it in a big way or whatever, I'm like, why? Oh, I should, I know this now. I know this now, but Again, it still falls into the trap of, especially when it's something that I'm like, oh, I really want this. I yeah. really have a deep desire for this. Um, mm-hmm. It, yeah, it's hard. Like you want to go out and make it happen. But every time I'm like, it's more about just setting the intention now of, mm-hmm. and stepping into like, no, I, I am that already. I don't need to chase it and go after it. it right. When I am it, it will find me. That's right. That's right. I think that's, you know, 
It's so interesting to me, and again, for those that are not real, um, you know, don't understand what we're talking about as far as open centers, those are places where you take in energy that is not yours, and there are also areas where we become uh, conditioned or we start to try to be who we're not. And the thing that I always say to my uh, clients that have a defined sacral is you're magnetic. Like, Mm -hmm. you're drawing things to you, whereas myself as a manifester, I actually have to, like, go out and make it happen. (laughs) And so I kind of actually really envy the defined sacral because it really does draw things to it, but it's that trust, Mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, it's it's trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can you can fudge it up real good. Yeah. <laughs> and I have <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying that's that manifest the manifesting generator part, right? Like mm-hmm. I, I do, I want to initiate, I want to go out and make that. I'm like, I'm very ambitious and very driven. Yes. Uh, but it almost to a fault, like, no, it will find me, but I have to trust and believe and be yes. before it does. Yeah. That's a big part of the generator and manifesting generator. Yeah, it is. Uh, Walk is developing um, that trust that everything is Mm -hmm. going to come to them in due time at the right time. Yeah. Um, And your authority is, oh, you said uh, sacral. sacral. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, there is truth in the moment for you, but Mm -hmm. uh, you do have to wait to respond for things um, to come to you. And, uh, yeah, that can be really challenging. The non-sacral folks, we have a whole different world that we live in. And, you know, if we, if it's right, we have the energy to do it. If, you know, if it's not right, we just don't. And, uh, you know, that can be hard to kind of flesh out to projectors. What, what would you tell me about projectors? Oh, projectors, um, definitely have to work on their worthiness first and mm-hmm. seeing themselves and validating themselves before they seek it in others. Um, so a lot of projectors that I work with, it's making sure that they believe in what they do and that they have mm-hmm. a solution and that they are very, very talented right. um, and getting them solid with that before we go out and create visibility and market the business. Because Mm -hmm. if you're trying to do it before you have that feeling at least even a little bit in, (laughs) right. You have to be obviously fully embodied, but like even just a little bit, making sure that they're writing content from that confident space, Mm -hmm. uh, then it's just, it's going to be like talking to a brick wall. Like it's right. It's no one's going to hear you. I, I think projectors are incredible. Incredible. I mean, their whole signature theme is success. So yes. once they're in their energy and they get how it works, holy moly, this like on fire. Yeah. All types, I think, do once you're in your energy, you are on fire, right? Right, right. Um, it's just getting to that point and working through and understanding how your energy works. Yeah. Yeah, it's patience. And again, same thing yeah. with like with yeah. the uh, sacral. It's mm-hmm. um, trusting that mm-hmm. the right invitations will will come to you. Um, yeah. as opposed to trying to like go out and like force it. And, you know, I, I find as a manifester, I, my channels are all um, projected. So yeah. I even have a waiting component. I can't just, yeah. I can't, yeah. I have to wait sort of for the invitation uh, to go forward as well. I think it's, mm-hmm. there's not a whole lot of manifesting channels per se. So I think most of us have That's a true. waiting component. Yeah. Um, so the, yeah. the reflector, you know, have you worked with, with reflectors or do you, um, I've done a rare. little bit, nothing. I haven't had a deep dive one oh one client with a reflector yet. Um, mm-hmm. but I've done smaller things with people one on one or like a once off session, stuff like that. Chart readings. Um, it really is about creating space for them that mm-hmm. is uplifting and allows them to feel good and supported if the people around them, if the environment that they're living in is any way, in any way toxic, mm-hmm. it's, it's just, it's going to be really hard for them to pull themselves out and feel like, feel like their authentic self, right? Cause they're, yeah. there's just too much inform, um, a negative energy bombarding them, right? right. They right. need that space to decondition, to get rid of all the energy and to come back to themselves. And then, allowing whatever the day brings, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of the surprise of like, who do I want to be today? How do yeah. I want to show up today? What, what energy am I feeling into today? Right. Um, and just allowing 
that flow to take them wherever it wants. And it's going to look, it's going to look all over the place to the outside world, but to them, mm-hmm. it's going to feel like, yeah, I'm just going to go here and I'm going to go here. And it's mm-hmm. like flowy um, and just natural to them but it's yes. not going to look like anything that the world says is successful. Yes. Not with them only comprising 1% of the population. Uh, yeah. I imagine, you know, that's it's it. And we're all going to look different, aren't we? I mean, that's the yeah, thing. For sure. And there's, there's just been, and business has been so structured for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just doesn't work for everybody. That's why very yeah. few, you see very few people become extremely successful in business and then if you add the spiritual component to it, there's a little bit of a discombobulation there because yeah. so many of us are either empathic or intuitive and it's, um, you know, it, it's hard to, you're taking on so much energy from the outside world. It's really hard yeah. to look out for your own needs and carve out a niche for sure. Well, I think the, especially in the spiritual community, when you're really empathic, empathic and can mm-hmm. sense all these energies, you know that the old way, the masculine way of doing things isn't going to work. Like you intuitively right. know that. Right. And it's just a matter of finding the thing that does work for you and mm-hmm. um, allowing yourself to carve a path that doesn't look like what it used to look like 10 years ago, 20 years right. ago, whatever. Right. Right. Um, you, it is a whole new world. We get to do it the way we want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's rapidly becoming, uh, yeah. changing very, very quickly. And that's yeah. very exciting, but yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of people that are just not really sure how to navigate it. Uh, mm-hmm. so it's yeah. really great that you're here. So you have, you work, you're very good with marketing, mm-hmm. um, and, um, messaging and copy. And I was not real clear with what that meant exactly. Would you explain that to the audience a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. So copywriting is basically words that sell. So anything that you're writing in your business, your website, sales pages, emails, content is all copy uh, because it's selling something, right? Mm -hmm. Messaging is basically the same thing. Uh, It's just... It, and maybe a nicer way to say it. Yeah. Copywriting sounds a little bit more mechanical. It does. Um, yeah. <laughs> messaging is like, no, this is my message to the world. And your messaging sells what your offer is, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, that's that's my passion is really communicating what it is that you do so mm. that people want to buy from you. And that way you can serve the world with your gifts and have a business that lights you up and doesn't feel like work, but is just an extension of you. That's beautiful. And human yeah. design really, I mean, it's, it makes such a difference in, because you're seeing it through that lens. So it's extremely individual. It's tailored to the individual. Yeah, it was really interesting when I first started writing copy for people. And I would have to rely on them telling me who they were mm. and uh, really what they stood for, things like that. And I knew for myself that it changed all the time. I didn't really know who I was. Right. And it was the same for them. Like they oftentimes would base who they were or who they wanted to be online based on what other people were doing. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, they're selling this. I'm going to sell that. Even though it wasn't really something that they wanted to sell or wanted to do, they just thought that's how you make money. Right. Right. Um, human design really helped me go, okay, this is how your energy works. And then let's blend that with what you do in your experience. Mm -hmm. And that's when light bulbs went off and people were like, oh, you get me like really, really get me. And I'm like, yeah, "Yeah, so let's, let's put that out in the world. (laughs) I love that. And that's where the world goes. This is for real. This is this real person uh, you know, speaking, they're coming from their heart. It's authentic. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. huge. And, and I feel like that, that, you know, people recognize that. Whereas when you're trying to copy what everybody else is doing, um, it, it just, it doesn't feel good to you. It doesn't feel again, does not feel good to them. And so I think this is a beautiful way to combine all of it. And human design in and of itself is just such a, an amazing, I mean, it's not, it's beyond above and beyond the whole business part of it. It's a way to become 
your authentic self. It's a way for yeah. you to love who you really are. Because when we're deeply conditioned, we're just fighting against our own our own design. Like we're living life in resistance, and that's not comfortable. Mm-hmm. No. And I think our souls are going to keep knocking us over the head until we yeah. get the message that like, Hey, let's, yeah. your, let's just be yourself. Yes. With the 2551, I've had plenty of those knocks. So I, <laughs> lots of wake up calls. So, yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And that's a big part of, of, I guess, um, being drawn to this work for me personally is just like, who am I really, you know, how does this, how does this machine, this vehicle work, you know, how does it drive best? I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't buy a car and not take glance at the, uh, the manual, right? Like, Mm -hmm. and, but we, we live our lives trying to do and drive like everybody else. And it Mm -hmm. just doesn't, it just doesn't flow. It doesn't work. And, and it's not a happy place to be. So I love that you're doing this. Um, Mm -hmm. so it's all about finding purpose and meaning in your work. I'm mm-hmm. um, using this approach and I think it's, it's really wonderful. So if people want to find you and find out what you offer, mm-hmm. uh, you have a website, it's uh, Ra- rachelweaver.com. Yep. And uh, you also have a podcast and I love I the title of it. Is it all right yeah. if I share that? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, be you, babe. <laughs> be you, babe. <laughs> be you, babe. I love that. I love that. So that's for, that's can be found on Spotify and then you have an Instagram, uh, I am yep. Rachel Weaver, yep. and a Facebook group that's a members group, correct, called yeah. uh, yep. Aligned Copy Posse? Yep, that's it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So I'm going to put all those details um, below um, awesome. this video or audio if you're listening to it. And um, so I always ask somebody, or I always ask my guests one last question. Yeah. kind of a silly question and there's no right or wrong answer and the question is if you could live at any time in history when would that be and why oh any time in history oh gosh i don't know if i could pick one i kind of want to sample them all Ooh, i want to like, like, I haven't like go back and like be an egyptian and then I kind of want to go, you know, go back in like the um, Renaissance period and like just get a taste of all of them. Wow. Um, yeah, I think I would. I don't know. That is answered like a true manifesting generator. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Like I'll take it all. Do it all. <laughs> Which dish do you want? All of them. All of them. <laughs> it's of everything, please. That's wonderful. I love that answer. I think that's one of my favorite answers I've ever heard. So. <laughs> that's um, awesome. Rachel, thank you so much for coming on today. And uh, again, find her at rachelweaver.com. And I'll have all the other relevant details uh, underneath this video or audio. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, Have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Everything Considered podcast. Join us next Friday at 1030 a.m. on WQEE. Feel free to like, share, and comment about what you've heard today. To find out more about my work, please visit my website at humandesignsimplified.weebly.com. Walking in someone else's shoes isn't always a good thing, especially when you're a tradeswoman. Women have been wearing men's work boots for decades, but Keen Utility is here to change that with work boots and shoes made specifically for women. Best of all, these boots are tradeswomen tested, vetted, and approved by women who know firsthand about capability, fit, durability, and performance. Keen Utility. Tradeswomen tested. Visit keenfootwear.com slash tradeswomen tested. Texting privacy policy in terms and conditions posted at textplan.us. Texting and rules for occurring automated text marketing messages. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stop, opt out. The pandemic has been hard on all our kids. New studies show more than one in three children who started school in the pandemic now need intensive reading help. That's right. Millions of kids in kindergarten through third grade in the United States cannot read at grade level. Here's the good news. Your child can be reading in just 30 days, guaranteed, with Hooked on Phonics. Even if your child has been struggling, Hooked on Phonics will teach your child to read in just 30 days, guaranteed. And right now, you can get started for just 
just $1. Text the word GRADE to 323232 right now. Hooked on Phonics is highly effective and incredibly fun. And everything can be done right from home and in less than 20 minutes a day. For more than 30 years, Hooked on Phonics has been the proven learn-to-read program that kids love to use. Text GRADE to 323232 and teach your child to read in just 30 days, guaranteed. Text GRADE to 323232 right now and get started for just $1. Text GRADE to 323232 now. Text GRADE to 323232. 